So I've got a lot of newcomers to the channel that saw Optimum Tech react to my desk. Absolutely not. Nice. For Jay's two cents. A 1600 by 1200 100 CRT. Dang. And several people have said, huh, that desk is funny, but I've never answered. Can you use a CRT as your primary display? I mean, look at this. Liquid crystals? We don't need that. What we need uh, is cathode ray tubes, baby. <sighs> and if you give it a second, has an age today. So I want to start by clearly stating the answer to the question. Can you use a CRT as your main monitor in 2021? In a word, yes. In more words, it depends on who you are. Also, very quickly, I would like to address the fact that Digital Foundry made a video on exactly this topic in 2019, but I have one major grievance with it. They used a Sony FW900, which is basically the cream of the crop when it comes to tube monitors. They're still very expensive. In this video, I wanted to make a more reasonable comparison, which is why I'm using this much cheaper gateway monitor I got from an old lady for basically nothing. First, if you're like me and already have a baller gaming monitor like this Omen 27i, a CRT will not be a noticeably better experience for you. In a lot of ways, CRTs are very obviously worse than contemporary gaming displays. They're very heavy and take up a lot of space, so automatically that means you need a thick desk to support it. The screen to body ratio is atrocious, meaning you're going to have to move it uncomfortably close to you in order to see anything, and they use a lot more power than a modern display. According to energy use calculator, my 17 inch CRT right here can draw up to 75 watts at peak brightness. Compare that to this 27 inch LCD panel which uses more like 50 watts. Still, if you're willing to pay a tiny bit more on your power bill every month, a CRT can look like a very appealing option. This is where I would like to address the second group of people who might be watching this video. People who don't have a gaming monitor right now. This was the boat I was in back in 2020, when my old gaming monitor started having technical problems. You can check out the video I made about that a couple of weeks ago if you missed it. So. I wanted a high refresh rate display to replace my old one, and I had just stumbled upon the CRT gaming subreddit, which turned me on to the idea of using an old CRT as my primary gaming screen. After a couple of days of looking, I posted a wanted ad on my local flea market site and got a result from an old lady whose son had just bought her an LCD screen to replace her old CRT. I looked up the specs, and man, this thing was legit. It has a maximum resolution of 1600 by 1200, though we'll need to take a closer look at that later, and a refresh rate of about 85 hertz, though it can reportedly go up to 100. The best part is, a lot of these older monitors can be posted by owners for very little because of how inconvenient they are to pick up. I bought this one for just $5, and I would like you to think about that for a second. This is basically the 4x3 equivalent of 1080p at 85 hertz. There are displays with those specs on Amazon being sold for over $100 right now. So let's find out if it's worth it. Putting your new monitor on your desk, you're bound to notice a few things. To start, it probably doesn't have a connector you can use with your video card. The majority of these screens were built using VGA connections, which hasn't been supported by mainstream graphics cards for about three hardware generations now. This means you'll probably need to buy an adapter. Some fancier CRTs did get DisplayPort support, but that wasn't very common and those monitors tend to be much more expensive, even used. Adapters for CRTs can be a little picky, and if you want to take advantage of really high resolutions and frame rates, you might need to buy a more expensive one. In this case, the CRT gaming subreddit is your friend, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Second, the screen isn't black. This might not seem like a big deal until you realize that a screen can never be darker than it is when it's off. If you're like me, then one of the things that sold you on using a CRT is that the colors are quite vibrant, owing to the way that CRTs work. Basically, a tube that runs along the length of the display is used to capture rays shot from a cathode in the back of the screen. That's where the name CRT comes from, it's a cathode ray tube. Thus, if a part of the screen is completely black, there is no light to be sent from the cathode. It's actually remarkably similar to how an OLED TV only shines light from the specific pixels that are being illuminated in a scene. However, 
CRTs have very thick layers of glass in the front, which are highly reflective. This means if you use a CRT in a well-lit room, the black levels on the display just aren't going to be very black. This can lead to a somewhat washed out looking display. So for the best performance, you're going to be better off playing games with the lights off. But again, if you're willing to buy an adapter and dim the lights to play games, then let's continue. Once you have your monitor where you want it and you get it plugged in, you might notice there's a thick black line or two that surround your display. This is because of what I mentioned earlier, the maximum resolution. See, CRT displays don't actually have a maximum resolution. They can technically display any resolution fed to them as long as it's within the specifications of the VGA or DVI cable you're using to play on it. While this does mean you can get a very crisp image on a CRT, it also means you have to manually tell the display where it's supposed to put the image on your screen. Most CRTs have little control buttons you can use to place the image, so this one takes a bit of trial and error. And remember, if you change your resolution, you'll have to do all of this again. So, you're in. You've set up your monitor, adjusted your image settings, and you're ready to play some games. This is the final hurdle. You see, it's been a long time since 4x3 or 5x4 aspect ratios were common, so a lot of games don't have presets for it. Not to worry though, because the communities around these games do often have solutions for gamers on these older resolutions. Like I said, if you're looking for a game in specific, CRT gaming is your best ally here. For now though, here's what it's like using a CRT in three of my favorite games. First up, Apex Legends. While Apex doesn't have great support for 4x3 aspect ratios, massive letterboxing on the top and bottom respawn, are you kidding me? At least it is technically supported. Playing an FPS game is one of the best ways to get the most out of this solution because the pixel density of a 17 inch monitor running at 1600 by 1200 means there's a lot of detail and crispness in the image. The downside is that games with poor UI scaling for small monitors will make things a little hard to read, such as this refresh rate counter in-game. Next up is Shadow of Mordor, though I did test it with Control and Death Stranding as well. Now, CRTs are hard to record. For some reason, a lot of the light that I got off this monitor in the camera was blue. To counter this, I'll be showing you the footage I captured in black and white, so the level of detail is easier to make out. Trust me, the screen is not blue at all in person. Honestly, this was also a clearly improved experience over a normal 1080p screen. Especially with the high refresh rate, this is a major step up for most people. Finally, emulation, and this is a strong showing for the CRT once again. Older games rendered at lower resolutions look phenomenal on this screen simply by virtue of the way CRTs displayed images. Since there are no pixels to account for, the CRT can display at whatever resolution it has to. This is great because older games tend to look a little fuzzy when rendered at non-native resolutions. So for me, the monitor is 3 for 3. Just to be sure though, I put it to the test in a cheap monitor roundup. Here I have three competitors, the two different examples of what I think someone would want to replace with a CRT. First up, a cheap, low resolution display. Fun fact, this exact monitor is my first monitor ever. See? Look in the background of one of my old videos. I'm Morgan Drake, aka Jabberwocky, and I am the lead editor for TV Dinners and Bullets. Videos usually take about a day. I recently moved from using Windows Movie Maker, which was terrible, to After Effects because we're actually using special effects now. This represents what I assume a lot of gamers right now have to use, a hand-me-down from 2012. Next up, a good 1080p display. This is the second monitor I expect people want to upgrade from, in this case a very good monitor from my local state surplus. It's 1080p and 60Hz, but beyond that there's very little that's special about it. It doesn't even have a display port or a DVI port. Not muted. The color, it's like f fuzzy color. Like not saturated? Yeah, it's not very deep <laughs> colors. I mean, it's clear, it's plenty clear enough. I don't see like any smearing or anything. Look at uh, Monstro when he jumps. Yeah, he's kind of slow. Like he only has like three frames. It's not black at all. Which no, is hilarious. it's gray. <laughs> and there's even a, like a white border. Mm -hmm. That's, um, oh, I can't remember what the term for it is, but like the edge of it is very not the correct color. What's it is that? dark. It is way darker 
It's more saturated, but it's darker and just kind of harder to see. It feels smoother, actually, than the other one. Everything just looks grainier. It's not quite as deep colors anymore. Of the three, just for this game at least, which one did you prefer? Um, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of liked the CRT just because the colors were deeper, but it was a little dark, but mm -hmm. it looked smoother. But the screen is glary, so I don't know. I guess for overall general fine experience, that one, mm -hmm. but I liked it more on the CRT. Mm. Oh, okay, that looks really bad. <laughs> Never mind. Even if it does look bad, what? I was gonna say, if it's a good enough game, you might, your brain will get used to it and kind of forget, mm -hmm. but it's not getting better. So yeah, this experience compared to the uh, the Acer hand-me-down special. Better. <laughs> yeah, like even just in this room, like this kind of elevator was really gray and washed out before. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could say there's not as much detail because everything is kind of smoothed, but I would rather be looking at smoothed than grainy. <laughs> so yeah, comparing the three. For this game, which experience did you like the most? CRT. You think? Yeah, well, like I said, this last one was fine overall, <laughs> but the CRT was just richer and I liked the smoothness. Mm -hmm. So, to answer this video's main question, can you use a CRT as your primary display? If you're currently using an old, non-gaming focused screen, I gotta say yes. It will be a noticeable upgrade for you in terms of game response and feel, and you might even find it outperforms other displays in specific games. If you're willing to put up with the idiosyncrasies of using older hardware with modern software, I promise it's a lot of fun. And there isn't anything quite like seeing your favorite games run on a monitor that might be older than you are. Links to everything I mentioned will be in the description, and if you're interested in getting into the community, I highly recommend checking out the CRT communities online. I'll have a link to them too, and please, let me know what you think of using a CRT for modern gaming down in the comments. Cricket. 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 No. Cricket. <laughs>